Welcome to Science Tools. I want you to think of a tool in your head. Imagine one. Is this what you thought of? Let's talk about what a tool is. A tool is a device, especially one held in the hand, used to carry out a particular function. So when you think of these tools, you are thinking of construction tools. Their function is to help people construct something. We have lots of tools that we use depending on what we're doing. What kind of tools are these? Well, they're gardening tools. They help people garden. Who would use these tools? An artist would use these tools. These are art supplies or art tools. In fact, you also use tools when you're at school. Your school supplies are your tools to be successful at school. All of these tools help us perform a specific task. Scientists use tools to improve their observations. Let's explore some science tools. Each science tool has a specific function that helps scientists get more information. Some science tools use numbers. Some tools help scientists count things. Some scientists estimate while others perform complex mathematical calculations. All scientists must be comfortable using numbers. Scientists use thermometers to measure temperatures. Temperature is measured in degrees Celsius, mostly in science, and in the United States, degrees Fahrenheit is often used to report the weather, to measure body temperature, and in cooking. Science tools are also used for measuring time. Time describes how long events take. The base unit of time is the second. Larger units are the minute, the hour, and the day. Smaller units include the millisecond and microsecond. Clocks, stopwatches, timers, and calendars are some of the tools used to measure time. Scientists use tools to measure length. Length is the distance between two points. The base metric unit of length is the meter. Rulers, meter sticks, and tape measures are tools used to measure length. Scientists use tools to measure mass. A balance is a tool used to measure mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. The base unit of mass is the kilogram. One kilogram equals 1,000 grams. This example is a three-beam balance. This is a pan balance. And this is an electronic balance. All of these balances measure mass. A spring scale is a tool used to measure force. Force is a push or a pull. When an object hangs down from the scale, the force of gravity or weight is measured. When the spring scale is used to pull an object, it measures the force needed to move the object. Either way, the base unit is called a Newton. You're probably familiar with a different version of a spring scale. Does this look familiar? This is an example of a spring scale you use at the grocery store. Scientists also use science tools to measure units of volume. Volume is the amount of space a solid, liquid, or gas takes up. Scientists use beakers, measuring cups, graduated cylinders, and droppers to measure volume. They also use a tool called a pipette, and it's a tool like a dropper, but it's more exact. It's used to add or remove very small amounts of liquid. We just explored how science tools use numbers to let scientists measure to improve their observations. Now let's look how other science tools help scientists improve their sight, which can also help them improve their observations. One tool is a collecting net. Scientists use a collecting net and an observation pan to answer questions. By carefully pulling the net through the water, they can catch small animals without harming them. Or this net is used to catch butterflies or small bugs. Let's see, oh, you caught something. Hurry, get out your camera so you can document or provide evidence that you caught that fruit fly. 
Cameras help scientists record events. Wow, that photo you took came out really well. That's a fruit fly. Now, I can see a lot of details in this photograph. Another way I can see close up is with a hand lens. This is a different type of bug, but look at what it shows. When you use a hand lens, what you caught looks a lot larger and you can see more details than you could with your naked eye. Scientists also make things look larger or magnify them by using a light microscope. The object to be viewed is placed on a clear slide and light passes through the object in two lenses. You look through the eyepiece and turn knobs to focus an image. The photograph you took is actually a really zoomed in version of a fruit fly. Here's some fruit flies on an orange. You see you get an idea of how tiny they really are. Remember that amazing photo you took of the fruit fly earlier? Check out what a fruit fly looks like under a light microscope. This magnifies parts of the fruit fly that we wouldn't be able to see with just our eyes. Besides light microscopes, scientists use electron microscopes. Scanning an electron microscope can magnify an object up to one million times. This microscope shoots a beam of electrons at the object. An image of the surface of the object appears on a computer screen. Here's that photo of the fruit fly again. Let's check out what he would look like under an electron microscope. This photograph is the eye of the fruit fly and it was taken on an electron microscope. Look at the details. I would never even know what that was if that photograph was not labeled. An electron microscope can magnify items much more than a light microscope. Our last science tools help scientists compute information. Computing tools make precise calculations and it can help you make sense of the data. You can use them to record, organize, and communicate information. A calculator is a tool that can help you make sense of data. You can use it to compute to make precise calculations. Computers can be used to make bar, line, or circle graphs to display numerical data. This makes patterns and trends in the data easier to recognize. To review, science tools have different purposes. They can help us use numbers, improve sight, or compute information, all with the goal of helping to improve scientific observations. That's it for me. Peace.